So, Bianca, mm -hmm. with coronavirus and the pandemic, a lot of people have actually lost their jobs right. and haven't, don't have the opportunity to work, are stuck at home, or homeschooling their kids, or they can't go to the movie theater, you can't go hang out in the parking lot of Top Foods. Right anymore you can't do what that's what i used to do can't go see a quiet place part two i know that's supposed to come out this friday can't go see the new james bond right i mean frozen twos on disney plus yeah i watched it last night it's pretty what good you think? i cried it's pretty there's some good lines in there he said my love I is fragile was... <laughs> or my love isn't fragile i was like dang <laughs> that is true i loved uh this will all make sense when i, I am, am older, older. <laughs> so good olaf made me laugh a lot Okay, so also, did you see the new plugin for Google Chrome, Netflix Party? No. It allows you to stream Netflix at the same time with your friends. No way. It's awesome. That's it, cool. Anyways, okay, we're getting off topic. Okay. But if we're not able to work and do what we've normally done, right? Okay, how, what that can lead to is just a sense <clears throat> of one, cabin fever right. and boredom. But also, there can be a sense of purposelessness. Mm -hmm. Like, what am I even doing right. in, with my life? And I think this is probably uh, most true for people who maybe who work part-time jobs, who you know were working at Starbucks, mm -hmm. and now there's really only a need for drive-through people, or right. people who are wait staff and we're in school, you know, most of the time, but we're waiting on tables or even full-time waiters and people mm. in the service industry uh, who are now without uh, a job. Here's the question. That is where most of us find a lot of purpose in our life. Right. How can we remain purposeful as followers of Christ, even if we're not working yeah. and doing the things that we normally do? Yeah. I think a lot of the times we can link the words purposeful to productivity. Okay. And so we can really intertwine that, especially as believers of, if I'm not producing something, if I'm not showing that I'm putting something out into the world, mm -hmm. then therefore I have no value, my work has no value, and right. there I'm, therefore I'm purposeless. Okay. Rather than purpose coming from a deeper place of who we are in Christ and what he's called us to do. and. I know like for me personally in times where I felt like, okay, I have all these ideas or I have all these things that I want to do, but no outlet for them or, you know, things that the world and everything else says will give me purpose, like having a good paying job and going to a good university and getting all, you know, all of the things that people place their identity in, right. you know, rather than placing that in who they are in the Lord, it can lead to this purpose-driven, productivity-hungry, yeah. monster version of yourself. So if I'm not productive in some societal way, mm -hmm. then I'm, I feel totally valueless. Right. So let me push back on that. It leads me to two questions. The mm -hmm. first is, but isn't working good? Like, isn't that yeah. from God? Totally. So how do you have a healthy view of that? Like, how mm -hmm. do you hold that, that what you're saying is absolutely true? Yeah. We can find so much worth and value as people in our productivity. Mm -hmm. And that maybe is unhealthy as part yeah. of our culture. But how do you hold that intention with this idea that work is good? That yeah. you're actually supposed to do and contribute and work? Right. Yeah, I think that's the perfect, the, to the two things to have perfect tension between, you know, in the sense, or like attempt, you know, yeah. because we are called to work and to do, you know, acts of faith and service unto the Lord. Like we see that all throughout James, that faith without works is dead mm -hmm. and that it's an overflow um, of our faith that we do things and not just, you know, I'm not just talking about evangelizing or the, you know, the spiritual things that we, we would and ought to do, but also like in your workplace, like mm -hmm. working for your family and providing yeah. for your family, you know, not just sitting on, on your butt saying, well, if God wanted to clothe me and feed me and give me a house, he'd do that and I don't have to do anything to earn it right. or to, you know, participate in that, which I think is kind of where we, a lot of people, especially I feel like my age sit of like, how, what is that balance of trusting God, but also working? Yeah. And I really believe that God, he works in our movement 
and right. he works in us, you know, he opens doors and we have to be actively walking through them to even interact with what he has for us. And I think of a verse that comes to mind is James 4, uh, I believe it's like 14 through like 16, mm-hmm. um, where he's talking about boasting about tomorrow, where he gives us all these practical ways of like, how do we, yeah. you know, have this faith that is shown in action. And he's talking about, you know, how could you go into such, don't say that you'll go into such and such a town and do such and such a thing when you don't know what tomorrow holds. And he has like kind of this ecclesiastical kind of like view of like your life is but a vapor and you can't even plan for tomorrow because you don't know what tomorrow has. Okay. So like in times like this in the pandemic, Mm -hmm. you really see that. Yeah. Because you're like, whoa, I had all these plans Mm -hmm. And now it's been taken from me. Yeah. And now I feel totally empty and right. lost. If that's the case, and for anybody watching right now, if that's how they're feeling, then mm. really this coronavirus has revealed maybe an idol. Totally. Or some sort of false hope. Mm-hmm. And so what you're saying is we do want to work. That's God-given. Yeah. But we don't want to place all of our value as human beings because it's mm-hmm. there's a deeper source to that. So right. here's the next question. What is that mm. source? How do we press in to our purpose uh, if, if it's not going to work right now? Right. How do I actively, practically press in to my purpose? Mm-hmm. And I wanted to read a verse, uh, Paul, talking about his purpose and what he's pressing in for in Philippians 3 he says not that I've already obtained this or am I already perfect but I press on to make it my own because Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus had made has made me his own I don't consider that I have made it on my own but one thing I do consider I forget what lies behind and I'm straining forward to what lies ahead Mm -hmm. I'm pressing on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And it seems like he's pressing in yeah. to a deeper purpose, something mm-hmm. that comes from God, not from his productivity, right. but comes from God. So how can a person actively, practically do that mm. right now? Yeah, I think of just even how I, I have tried to do it. I've been encouraging friends, like my friends who are losing their jobs and they're, you know, they're young. There's older people who are losing their jobs too. And, and how it really, I believe that first step in, in really understanding what that is, is connecting with the Lord yourself and being like, okay, what are my giftings? Recognizing what your giftings are, recognizing the way that the Lord has been, is going to use you in the lives of other people. Whether that's, you know, I feel like stay-at-home moms experience this on the daily of like how do I practically live out this calling in my life that doesn't always look like how I want it to like if you have a passion for you know if in your job you're an executive and you lead meetings and you have a passion for teaching and you have that it's how really taking those things and recognizing what they are and living out other avenues of that purpose in in your life in another environment. in another environment so you're like here's how i am gifted mm-hmm. here's how god was using that in my life i was right. at church i was with my friends i was working i was doing all these things mm-hmm. well now those avenues have been taken right away, but i'm still gifted yeah and i can still use these gifts and what god has given me mm-hmm. in these avenues so you're looking totally. for new avenues is mm-hmm. that what you're saying yeah i feel like it could be like looking for new avenues to use what god has given you and also looking around you and seeing the lives that you can impact within i mean with the whole quarantine thing like within your household yeah. if your neighbors aren't you know super cooped up within your neighborhood uh-huh. like how can you how can you take this thing that is irrevocable like your the calling on your life and if you don't know you know I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be people listening who are like well i don't know the calling on my life i don't know yeah. what god's gifted me with and i would encourage you during this time if you are searching for that purpose on what to do you know and and more i wouldn't even say it's what to do but more who to be in this time okay you know who what the follower of christ that is living into the purpose that you may not even been able to access yet you may not have had the opportunity and to really dig deeper into, you know, who God is making you to be. Because ultimately, you know, we can get into the specifics of that, but 
ultimately the goal is always to make him look more like his son, look mm -hmm. more like Jesus, whether that is through your workplace, through your family, through your neighborhood. That is the goal. You know, that is what God is using in this time. And I believe that even with, you know, this search for purpose in the midst of what's going on in our world, like we are able to press in more to who God is making us to be, not just individually, but the overall health of the body of Christ in our communities around the world, and that we're able to take these things and look at them in new lights. Like, how do we, like for me, where I, the calling on my life is to evangelize and bring people to Christ, and that's usually pretty like in person, at coffee yeah. shops, you know, things like that that are really like, person-to-person -person interaction and now I mean I could go into a coffee shop if they were even open yeah. and I'm sure people if I even try to talk to them would like run away because people are scared and how do we make these new avenues while also still living into the fact that even if you do find these new avenues and you do find new new ways to do things mm -hmm. if you're not rooted in Christ first and foremost and understanding that that is where your purpose comes from. And it is living out of that that you find new avenues and new ways of doing things.